Okay, guys, in this video lesson, we're going to talk about kinetic energy and temperature a little bit and also particle speed distribution, okay? So a couple of things we want to make sure that we're comfortable with when we're dealing with kinetic energy and temperature. First of all, what is temperature, okay? So this should be review for us, but let's make sure we're comfortable with it. Temperature measures the average kinetic energy of a system, okay? So make sure you underline the word average here because it's not total energy because then you're adding up all the different particles. So in this case, it's just what's the average? So you take a, a sample of water, take the temperature of it, and that temperature represents the average energy inside that sample of water, okay? Now, anytime you have particles in any state of matter, solid, liquid, or gas, they are moving, okay? So they have energy through either through vibrations or flowing or just random chaotic motion. And in all cases, we get movement, okay? So that energy that is exhibited by that movement is called kinetic energy, okay, or the energy of motion. So what we're doing here is temperature actually tracks this movement, basically. It attracts the energy of motion. Now, the faster particles move, the more kinetic energy that they have. Okay, so that kind of makes sense, right? As temperature goes up, particles move faster. Particles are, move faster, are moving faster because they have more energy, okay? Now... Um, if we take a look over here, we see two different examples. Here we have warmer gases. Uh, so they're warmer, they're moving faster, higher kinetic energy. Here, if they're cooler, they're moving slower, they have lower kinetic energy. Okay? So the question kind of becomes, how does this scenario then affect intermolecular forces and their ability to hold a substance together? So if you think about it, IMF doesn't change, right? IMF is a certain amount of force. It's a specific amount of force that each molecule can exhibit on itself. So... That means if you increase your energy and you're moving faster, you're not changing the force, so the force does not hold on to you as well, okay? So what we say here is that IMF stays the same, but as you increase energy, the ability to break free of IMF or the ability to, like, overpower IMF increases as we move forward, okay? And this thing would not watch it a little bit. At any given temperature, the molecules of a gas are in continual motion. At any instant, some molecules have more kinetic energy of motion than others. With increasing temperature, the average kinetic energy increases in proportion to the absolute temperature. This graph shows the distribution of molecular speeds for a particular gas at two different temperatures. Notice that the most probable molecular speed, given by the peak of the curve, increases as the temperature increases. Here we see a mixture of two gases with different molecular masses, helium and neon. The more massive neon atoms move more slowly, but they possess the same average kinetic energy as the helium atoms. At a given temperature, the distribution of molecular speeds for helium is much more spread toward high speeds than for neon. As the temperature increases, the average speeds of both helium and neon atoms increase. At any given temperature, their average kinetic energies are the same. Okay, so what they're talking about in that video is the fact that at any given temperature, we really don't have the same speed of particles. What we have is a range of speeds, okay? What we do with that is called a kinetic energy distribution, okay? Um, and because temperature measures the average speed or the average kinetic energy, that's what we're really looking at here, okay? Now, that curve that develops from that is called the Maxwell distribution curve. And if we take a look, here's an example of a Maxwell distribution curve, okay? And here we have 100 Kelvins, 300 Kelvins, 600 Kelvins, or 1,000 Kelvins. So what we're saying is that any given temperature, we have different amounts of speed, basically. Now, if you notice, though, some things to keep in track of. Over here, we have our number of particles. And here, we have the speed of the particles, which then relates to that kinetic energy. So, if you have a sample that measures at 100 Kelvins, okay, you have some particles that are moving this fast, some particles moving this fast, some particles that are barely moving at all. If you have something that measures at 1,000 Kelvins, you have particles that are moving hardly at all, and are moving extremely fast way down here, okay? So um, the take home here is that if for any given sample, we don't have a single speed of particles. We actually have a range of speeds. And that's gonna lead into some different things in terms of how things boil and why they boil where they do and vapor pressures and other things that we're gonna be talking about in some future lessons. So the idea is in the back of your head is just keep in mind that particles actually move at different speeds in a given time, okay? Now, what I wanna do is jump you out to this little, this link here. Okay, so in this graphic, if we take a look, 
this kind of shows all the different particles and then moving around in a gaseous state, okay? And they're moving at different, you know, different speeds as you take a look at this. And then down here, if you look in the right in the left-hand corner, we see kind of a curve developing, okay? But we have all these different particles. Some are moving very, very fast. Some are moving very, very slow yeah, as you take a look at this um, in terms of how their particle speeds are set up, okay? So we're going to slow this simulation down. I'm going to slow it down so we can see it better now. Okay, if I slow the simulation down a little bit, we start to see that, you know, the particles, even though it jumps a little bit on us, we see that some particles are definitely moving faster than other particles, while some are moving slowly. Look at this guy, he's barely moving at all. Oh, now he just got bumped, and now he's moving faster. So the speeds change over time, but as you graph this, or if you take a look at it, we get this nice distribution curve developing, okay? And that curve is different depending on the total amount of energy in that system, okay? So jump back into our presentation. This also works if we're talking about different size particles, okay? So I want to move over to the iPad and show you this one. So if you have three substances, and again, the blue substance, let's say it is C3H10. The green substance, we'll call it C2H6. Uh, oh, sorry, C3H. That should be C3H8. C2H6, and maybe this is CH4 is our red substance, okay? So if you take a look, you can also graph this based off of weight or how heavy something is. And if we look, your heavier particles, here now we have the same temperature, okay? So at the same temperature, your heavier particles, your propane is going to move slower than your ethane, than your methane, okay? So same idea, same concept. But because we have different masses of particles, they move at different speeds, okay? So on average, if you have two things and they are at the same temperature, the heavier object will be moving slower, okay? Um, that also will play a role in terms of how things boil and kind of how we things get, get things to melt and the different melt, melt, boiling points and melting points and those kind of things, okay? So kind of two things here. One, if we go back to here, it's all about the temperatures. If you change the temperature as you warm them up, the peak shifts to the right and it flattens, but the variety or the range also gets much bigger. And two, if you have different mass substances, the more massive substance will be moving slower, the lighter substance will be moving faster at the same temperature, okay? Now, now that ends that video here. Um, in our next section, we'll talk about solids, liquids, and gases. Thanks, guys.